This is the Anchor Make M5 3D printer on Kickstarter. Now, normally I don't talk about Kickstarter campaigns because I don't really agree with large companies using them for promotional reasons. But I just had to make a video about this printer because it's not just another i3, like I initially dismissed it, but actually this machine should terrify existing 3D printing manufacturers because it has the potential to hugely disrupt the industry as we know it, for better or for worse. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So if you're a long-term subscriber of the channel, um, firstly, thank you for coming along this journey with me. You may be familiar with an old series I used to do called Should You Back It? Where I looked at 3D printer Kickstarter campaigns, analyzed the company behind them, the, the specs and features on display, and I sort of assessed if it was more likely to be a scam or if it was worth backing. And we had such classics as the Olo and the M3D Pro and the notorious Kadama Obsidian. And it was that last one that really put me off talking about Kickstarter campaigns on this channel because yeah, they didn't deliver. Uh, anyone that backed it got scammed. And I made a video where I was, I, I honestly was taken for a ride. Uh, the machine that was sent to me was completely pre-production, wasn't at all uh, something that was ready to go, and all this stuff happened behind the scenes, and yeah, I felt terribly guilty for that, making that video, even though I said in it that this is really early and like I would be really cautious about backing this campaign. So why am I talking about another Kickstarter campaign? Well, like I said, initially I looked at the Anchor Make M5 as just another i3. Uh, we've seen heaps of them on Kickstarter before, we've seen ones from Creality. But the thing is, this machine isn't from some unknown brand spending a lot of money on promotion to get something up and running quickly. It's from Anchor, and that's a big deal. If the name Anchor is at all familiar to you, then that's probably because you've got one of their products in your home already. They make battery banks, cables for mobile phones, chargers, and all sorts of power-related accessories for mobile devices. And the company is absolutely massive. They've got manufacturing in China and headquarters all around the world in the EU, US and Australia. The Kickstarter campaign video is only one and a half minutes long. It's one of the shortest I've ever seen. And it's purely an advertisement showing what this machine is capable of and kind of a little story about printing a toy for the guy's kid. And the whole idea, the whole angle Anchor's going with is to show 3D printing as easy and accessible. And that's something I've always strived for on the channel. My tagline is empowering creativity through technology. And if this machine delivers what it claims to, then it does exactly that. It empowers creativity. The guy makes a toy for his kid through technology. It prints the toy. However, if you actually try to do that with current low cost 3D printers on the market, you'll quickly realize that it's actually not that easy. You can't just go from an idea and a sketch to this machine spitting out a part without any interaction. The printers on the market right now are quite frankly, incredibly unreliable, even fairly expensive ones. You see, apart from a few outlying companies that value quality control, we've been in a race to the bottom for the past three or four years. Behind me, I have an Ender 3. It's the original Ender 3 but I bought it recently and I'll be comparing it to my old render three from 2018 in a future video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. But if you try to buy an i3 style printer, currently there is so many clones of clones. Even Creality, who made the Ender 3, has tons of variations on the market at the same time of the Ender 3. And none of them are that great. You need to know a lot to get them up and running. They're, they're sort of like 80% there. The user has to put in the extra 20%. And that really holds back 3D printing into this niche hobby realm where people are happy to tinker with things and stops it becoming mainstream and widely accepted. Because anyone that bought these machines expecting them to be just, okay, press print and walk away, and then you come back to a part every time, would have been burnt by that experience. And then they probably put the machine in their cupboard to collect dust and gave up on the whole technology in general, which is a real shame. Now I did say there's some outliers. There are some companies that put a genuine effort into making these machines as user-friendly as possible. It's like, for example, the Prusa Mark III series that's had a few iterations, 
And that machine has bed leveling, really good wizards, and a really good support network to get you up and running. But you can still modify it if you like. But we still haven't seen, in my opinion, a machine that is designed purely for the consumer. They don't have to tinker with it, or really they can't tinker with it. And it just works as intended. And I really, really hope this machine's gonna be that. So why do I think this machine has a really good shot at finally bridging that gap? to make 3D printing more mainstream and accepted. Well, the thing is they've taken all the best usability features of printers over the last few years, like auto bed leveling and filament runout detection and that sort of thing, and rolled it into one cohesive unit. So it does the auto bed leveling and I assume nozzle height as well. And if the, if the printer is manufactured to a high degree of precision, then the user shouldn't have to touch anything to do with setting the first layer. Uh, nozzle height, which is usually the hardest thing for a beginner to do, is figuring out that first layer, it's too close, too far, it's too far on one side, but too close on the other. All of those those variables are removed if you have good first layer mesh bed leveling. If they can do that, that's already one massive hurdle. Filament run out, so if the filament runs out, they've designed it so it's got the run out sensor on the side and the direct drive extruder in the middle, so if it runs out, it senses it like on the side, not just above the extruder. You know, you can actually remove it. <laughs> like some of the machines on the market have the filament run out just in front of the Bowden extruder, which means that you can't pull it out. There's just some considerate design there, which make, will make the usability better. And then there's the AI camera monitoring, which none of the pre-production guys could show, but there already is companies like the Spaghetti Detective, which uses a camera and AI to look at the print as it's building, and it's kind of looking for failures. So it'll look for, you know, spaghetti, like the print falling off the print bed and detaching and moving around and then warn you or stop the print if it detects an anomaly. And if that's built into a printer, that's gonna be huge because yeah, prints can fail. You know, you can have a paper jam on a 2D regular inkjet printer, but it's all about managing those failures. And if the machine can detect it and then stop the print or warn you or say something's going on, before coming back to like a ball of death, like I have done so many times on my, you know, dumber 3D printers, that's gonna go a huge way to making it more usable for someone who isn't super tech savvy. But wait right there, do not go off and just back this campaign based on what I've said so far, cause there is some gotchas. Number one, it's Kickstarter. This platform, if you back this campaign, it's little more than a donation. Yes, Anchor's a massive company, but the platform Kickstarter doesn't have to deliver anything. <laughs> Which is why there's been so many campaigns in the past, in, you know, a lot of 3D printers included, where people have backed them and they've gotten nothing. They've gotten nothing for their money and it's just been essentially a scam. Whether it was intended or not to be a scam, they didn't get their product or what they got was severely lacking in what they expected. And that's the thing with Kickstarter. They offer no protection. I hate the platform for physical products. I think it's a terrible choice. But why has Anchor used it? Well, because it gets hype. They have pumped, I would say hundreds of thousands of dollars into the marketing and release of this printer. You can find so many press releases and the only videos that have come out and like, you know, no disrespect to the LTT team or Uncle Jesse because they've done great videos on this product, but they've done paid videos on the product. So it looks like Anchor's controlled very tightly who these pre-release units have gone to and they've sort of controlled the, the media around it. This video is not sponsored by Anchor. This is my own thoughts on the, the product, the campaign in general, and just the future of 3D printing as a whole. So uh, in terms of like unbiased opinion, this is sort of as unbiased as you can get because I just want to share my thoughts and opinions with you guys because I, I do care a lot about this community and the future of it. And I do really want to see a machine that makes printing easier. I genuinely do. But I just wish Kickstarter wasn't the route that these companies would use to try to do it. Again, Anchor's massive. They didn't have to do this, but they've done it. And by doing so, created, which will probably be the largest 3D printed Kickstarter of all time. As of time of filming, it's trailing the Snapmaker 2 by just a little bit with 40 days to go on the campaign. And I reckon it's going to surpass it. And the thing is, Snapmaker 2 was like a test, in my opinion, a test of this market. They, they did reach out to me many times for uh, reviews. I will never ever promote a machine that has an exposed laser diode on it because you can go blind 
like that with lasers. And I think it's ins it's just so stupid to do it. So any company doing an exposed laser diode like this, instant blacklist, I'm never gonna, never gonna show them on the channel. Other than that though, it's probably quite a good printer and I've heard good things about it printing. But the Anchor Make seems to be like the 2.0 of trying to make these printers easier to use for just the general consumer. But there's one final gotcha, one final one before I leave this video. Doesn't matter how good your 3D printer is, if you can't 3D model, you can't 3D print. Okay, this is gonna rile up some people, but I don't care. Yes, you can download models from people all around the world. I make 3D models to sell and share uh, freely on my channel all the time. But going back to the video, like the use case is he's designing a toy for his kid. You have to 3D model that toy. You need 3D modeling skills to do it. There's like Tinkercad, there's mobile apps, but there is no cheaty way, I suppose, of 3D designing. It's still a very difficult skill, a very high value skill that takes years to learn. The best 3D printer in the world will not replace that. So if you're interested in backing this printer, but you have no design skill, then I highly recommend checking out my CAD for Newbies series with Fusion 360. Also, you can check out Tinkercad. I'll put all these links in the description for resources to learn a bit of 3D modeling before you get your printer, uh, because that's gonna make the experience all that more valuable to you. During my research for this video, I came across this fantastic interview by Fred uh, over on his uh, Textonation channel, which is a great name, uh, with Robert, who's like the PR spokesperson for the Anchormate 3D printer. I'll link it in the description. It's a really good interview. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty much straight to the point. But what I really liked what Robert said was he said he wants the machine to, and I quote, uh, cross the border between a niche and mainstream market. And I want to see that. I don't want to see people put off 3D printing because they didn't know how to level a bed or a machine came faulty from the factory or a limit switch was broken or the nozzle jammed because the first layer was too close and they destroyed it. All of those factors, if you can remove them, I wanna see just pure creativity with this tech. And I think we're getting really close to that, but I'd just like to throw my 10 year prediction out there and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. But I think the future of uh, you know, consumer 3D printing isn't gonna be FDM slash FFF technology, that is getting filament and melting it through a hot end. What I reckon we're gonna end up with is a miniaturized version of the object technology, which is resin jetting. Uh, it used to be object and then 3D systems bought them. I don't know, like project series now. And the reason I think resin jetting is gonna be the way forward is because it's mechanically simpler and less prone to failure than FDM or FFF. And the way it works is imagine you have like an inkjet head, except instead of squirting out ink, you squirt out UV resin. And then each layer is then cured with a bar, like a UV light, which goes across and cures the layer in place. And then the inkjet head, well, the, the resin jetting head comes back in and goes psh, 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 and sprays in that cross section. And then again, is cured in place. Out of all the 3D printing technologies I've come across, this has been like the most reliable. So you have support material, which is like a, a jelly-like resin. And then you have the built material. And yes, it's UV cured resin. So it will have its own limitations and benefits, but you get high detail. But the reason I think it's the way Ford versus FDM is that the slicing and all that is sort of removed. It just does its own thing. It comes across, does one layer, does another layer, and then it knows where to put the support material in, knows where to put the build material in. You can even do full color. You can even do flexible materials. Some of the really high-end systems have several resins they can jet out at the same time into the same print. And I could see it going forwards with like cartridges and you just put them in, the user doesn't have to know anything about how the machine works. It's all done behind the scenes. They just need to have their design. They just send it to the machine and then come back an hour or so later to a fully resin jetted part that is cured, safe to touch and ready to go. I think in 10 years time, that's gonna be super established, super affordable and kind of like the current inkjet market where it's all about the consumables, not really so much about the machine itself, because mechanically, it'll be pretty simple. But I would love to hear your thoughts below, and thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, again, if you choose to back this campaign, do so at your own risk, because Kickstarter is a little more than a donation, but I don't really have any doubt Anchor Make is going to deliver, because again, Anchor, gigantic company, I have no no reason to think that they wouldn't, they're not already in production and they're not going to deliver. But again, you do so at your own risk. Don't come blaming me if something goes horribly wrong. And if you found this video interesting or enjoyable, then maybe consider subscribing to Maker's Muse. It is my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys.
Bye.